G'day guys, we've got a microeconomics question for you today where we're asked to find the short run labour demand curve for an Indonesian textile factory. Now this textile factory has a Cobb Douglas production function which is equal to Q equals L to the 0 0.6, K to the 0 0.2 where L and K are the inputs or factor inputs of labour and capital respectively. Now we're also told that in the short term our capital inputs are fixed at 32 units and that the firm or the factory can sell its output at $50 per unit. So we're asked to find the factory's short run labour demand curve when capital is fixed at 32 units. So the assumption that we're making that in the short term the capital stock is fixed at 32 is an assumption that I'm relatively comfortable making. Why you might ask? Well that's because our firm can't just instantly create a new machine or instantly create a new manufacturing process or instantly educate all of its workers so to increase their human capital. That takes time and so we can only really change the capital stock that a firm has in the long term. However, in the short term, we can employ more workers or we can fire workers or we can reduce or increase the amount of hours that they're rostered on for the week. So we can, in the short term, um, manipulate the labour supply to sort of optimise our output or in this case Q. Okay so when we have our capital inputs fixed at 32 units what we can do is we can directly link the factory's output Q to the labour inputs L and the way we're going to do this is substitute our capital stock or 32 into our Cobb Douglas production function. So we're going to have Q is equal to the labour inputs, so L to the power of 0 0.6 times the capital inputs, which we know is 32, to the power of 0 0.2. Cool, now that's equal to the L to the 0 0.6 won't change, obviously. Now, 32 to the power of 0 0.2 is the same as 32 to the power of a fifth, which is the same as the fifth root of 32, which is equal to 2. So this is going to equal 2 L to the 0 0.6. So now what we have, guys, is we have a function that directly links the output Q to the labour inputs L. So let's just write that down over here. Okay guys, now we've got our output as a function of our labour inputs, what we're going to do is we're going to go over a few microeconomics 101s. And that is that if we have a firm, any firm will attempt to produce and sell a given quantity of widgets, so to speak, that maximises the firm's profits. And that this profit maximizing condition of a firm occurs when marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Cool. Okay, so now that we've got this profit maximizing condition, we go back to the question and it asks us to calculate the factory's short run labor demand curve when capital is fixed at 32 units. So let's just figure out or ask ourselves what is going to influence the labor demand for this particular factory. Now, and what you're going to find is, well, it's going to be primarily influenced by the amount of output the next unit of labour input we're going to get, because we've got a fixed marginal revenue per unit that we sell, which is $50. So the whole situation, the whole marginal revenue is going to be determinant on how much extra output we can get per unit of labour input. So for that, what we're going to have to do is we're going to work out what the marginal product of our labour is. So we're going to calculate the marginal product of labour. Now what this is, is it's just how much extra output can we get per unit of extra labour input, or if we're going to mathematically express it, it's the derivative of the quantity of output with respect to labour. So we're going to differentiate our function that we've just come up with and we find that this is going to be equal to 1 
0.2, L to the negative 0 0.4. Cool, so now we have our marginal product of labour. To figure out what our marginal revenue is, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the marginal product we get for every labour input by the amount we get for that extra product, or $50. So what we've been basically asked to find here is our marginal revenue product of labour. So how much extra money is the firm going to bring in for each individual, well, each extra labour input that it sort of puts into the manufacturing process? So we're going to find this by going, well, this is the marginal revenue of our output or M marginal revenue. So the sale price basically multiplied by the marginal product of our labor. So how much extra output we're gonna get. Cool, so let's just input all the things that we have into this equation and we have our marginal revenue, which is equal to $50. That's what our sale price is. And that's multiplied by our marginal product of labour, which is just simply 1.2L to the negative 0.4. So times 1.2L to the negative 0.4. Cool. So we can simplify this and we can get this marginal revenue product of labour. It's a bit of a mouthful, I get it, is equal to $60 times L to the negative 0.4. Okay, so now we put the marginal revenue product of labor, which is equal to $60 times L to the negative 0.4, or let's just rewrite this so it looks a bit neater. 60 divided by L to the 0.4. Cool. Let's just unpack what this means. So we've got the marginal revenue product of labor or the extra revenue that this textile factory is going to be able to derive from employing the next unit of labor. So for a profit maximizing firm that sort of fulfills this condition that the marginal revenue is gonna equal the marginal cost, this firm will be willing to pay a wage rate which is equal to the marginal revenue for the next worker. So what we're going to find is this marginal revenue product of labor is simply equal to the wage rate, or W. And so now, finally, we're left with the short-run labor demand curve when capital is fixed at 32 units. However, guys, in real life, this demand curve for labor isn't necessarily going to be very useful. Why? Because we have the wage rate in terms of the labor hours supplied. Whereas it's probably more useful to us to get the, lab the labor supplied at any given wage rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this formula so we can have L in terms of W rather than W in terms of L. So let's just move this up here. And we're going to take L to the other side. So we're left with 60 equals W times L to the 0 0.4. We'll take W over. Cool. And we're going to mul we're going to take both of these sides to the power of 2.5 because that will cancel out the 0 0.4. So we'll actually do this one longhand. What we're going to do here is we're going to take both sides to the power of 2.5 to the power of 2.5. 0 0.4 times 2.5 is 1. So that'll cancel that one out on this side. We're left with L. And here we've got 60 on W to the 5 power of 5 over 2 is equal to the amount of labor that this firm is going to supply. So given a wage rate of W, the amount of labor that the firm should supply or the amount of labor that the firm should demand, sorry, to make sure that we're at a um, 
always fulfilling this profit maximization condition, is 60 on W to the 5 on 2. Okay, so let's quickly rehash what we did to get to our final labor demand curve. First of all, guys, what we did is we inserted our fixed capital requirement of 32 units into our formula and then simplified it to get output is equal to 2L to the 0 0.6. What we then did is we differentiated this function, this output in terms of labor uh, demanded, to find the marginal product of labor, which was the derivative of the output with respect to the labor input. And we found this was equal to 1.2L to the negative 0.4. What we then did is we multiplied the marginal product of labor by our marginal revenue or the uh, revenue that we gained for every additional unit produced, which the question told us was $50, to get the re marginal revenue product of labor. So the extra revenue that the firm will receive for every ex additional labor unit that they demand we found that it was equal to 60 L to the negative 0 0.4 or 60 on L to the 0 0.4. We then um, rearranged this to make sure that we had a an expression that was more useful in real life. So instead of having the wages in terms of the labor demanded, we have the labor demanded in terms of the wage rate. And that gives us a more sort of intuitive understanding of the relationship between the labor demand and the wage rate of this particular firm. So guys, I hope the video helped. If it did, you know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos like this all of the time. But in the case of these kind of questions, it only requires you to do a couple of them, but just make sure you're doing a variety of questions because you don't want to get into an exam situation and not have seen the question before. So until next time, guys, just keep practicing, keep enjoying your economics, and I'll see you again soon.